I originally had a really good plan. I would release Pokemon pronunciation videos all throughout August, starting with Legendaries, moving to the first four generations, then doing the next four generations, all while saving Generation 9 for last. But then Scholastic, the people who put on book fairs when you were a kid to teach you you were poor, decided to release a Scarlet and Violet handbook. Do you know when they did this? After I'd filmed all the videos and had them scheduled and prepped and ready to go in order. But because I want to get the official Generation 9 pronunciations out as soon as possible, this video is releasing first, when it should have been last, so you may notice some inconsistencies in the next few videos this month. On the bright side, this means I don't have to trust any sketchy websites that claim to have an uncle who worked at the Pokemon company and he totally knew how they were officially pronounced. It's all straight from the horsey's mouth now. On the not so bright side, despite Gen 9 introducing 100 new Pokemon, most of them are fairly straightforward when it comes to their pronunciation. So this video will be a combination of some of those new Pokemon, as well as Pokemon from previous generations that I totally didn't purposely leave out of other videos to put them in here. I would never be smart enough to plan that far ahead. Alright, let's kick things off at the beginning of the Paldea Pokedex with Fui Toko. Since it's based on Fuego, the Spanish word for fire, then you should be calling the hot crocodile Fuecoco. And for those wondering, this was my starter in Scarlet because Stella Dirge is the coolest of the fully evolved Gen 9 starters and no one can convince me otherwise. Continuing with the Paldea starters, we have the fully evolved form of Quaxley. Since its etymology is based on the word carnival, this is Quaquavol, not Quaquaval, like Val Kilmer. Next up is the evolved form of Dolliv. Considering that the entire line is based around an olive, I thought it was called Arboliva. Nope, its correct pronunciation is Arboliva. That's because it's a combination of Arboretum and Olive, and I guess the Pokemon company decided to lean a bit heavier on the Arboretum side of things. According to Pokemon DB, the name for the evolved form of Flittle is a mixture of ESPN, Telepathic, and Cleopatra. And nothing to do with an ostrich, which is weird considering that it's the ostrich Pokemon. Regardless, you should summon the word telepath in your mind when saying Espathra. Don't do what I did and call it Espathra like Pommy. I mean, it doesn't even have paws. I blame this next one on Digimon. For the uninitiated, there's a Digimon called Frigimon. So I called the baby ice dragon Frigibax when it's actually Frigibax. Frigid, Frigibax. It, it kind of makes sense. And by extension, its evolution is called Arctibax, not Arctibax. Before I move on, I'll throw out a hot take. The first two seasons of the Digimon anime are better than the first two seasons of the Pokemon anime. If you agree or disagree, sound off in the comments. This mispronunciation might be exclusive to me, but I called the Gold and Silver Goldango, like Eric Dane, aka McSteamy on Grey's Anatomy. But this is one situation where the obvious pronunciation is the right one. As confirmed by a recent Scarlet and Violet trailer, and doubly confirmed by the new handbook, this guy is called Golden Go, like, you know, Golden. Yeah, my bad. For one of the evolved forms of Char Cadet, the mispronunciation likely comes from a place of not bothering to focus on the spelling. And let's be honest, Armor Rogue sounds a lot cooler than Armor Rouge, but it is called Armor Rouge, like Moulin Rouge. And then we have the box legendary for Pokemon Violet. No, I won't be making a ride on D's nuts joke here. Instead, I'll say that I thought it was called Maridon, like, would you like to maride on D's nuts? Boom, got him! But since this Pokemon is based on the Japanese word for future, that means it's pronounced Miridon, which doesn't open things up nearly as much for D's nuts jokes. If you're worried about Koridon's pronunciation, don't be, it's Koridon. Okay, now we get to the Pokemon that I thought was completely useless in my run of Violet, until I got to the Elite Four and it absolutely swept everybody. The entire time, I called this guy Pomot. Then I learned its name is based on a Marmot, so the official pronunciation is Pomet. Fun fact, I couldn't tell you what a Marmot looks like. While the previous pronunciation was plenty titillating, this one does not make my boss stiff. While it's a mixture of Mastiff and Mischief, apparently the little doggo is called Mastiff, not Mastiff, like, you know, how it's spelled. Obviously there's a chance someone at Scholastic made a spelling error, but for now, you should call this guy Mastiff. I masterfully debated whether or not I should include this guy in the video, but depending on how you pronounce the word Bombardier, you could have called this something completely wrong. 
Officially, the Pokemon that enjoys dropping things from the sky is called Bomberdeer, not Bombardier. So think of a deer when saying this Pokemon's name and not a bird, because that makes sense. Now we come to the most sus Pokemon in the Paldea region. Instead of saying its name like Tattoo, Don Dozo's best friend is based on the Japanese word for stand, so you want to call it Tatsugiri. I probably still managed to butcher the name like the chefs in the Pokemon world must do to Tatsugiri when making sushi, but you get the idea. To finish up the Paldea region, we'll focus on a person, not a Pokemon. The amount of people who think he's called Giacomo is frankly astonishing. It's Giacomo, like the very common human name in our world. Again, it's Giacomo. You're welcome. Let's leave the 5 frames per second windmills of the Paldea region and explore the rest of the Pokemon world, shall we? And because I want this to be as seamless as yoga pants, I'll be going in alphabetical order. It's, it's definitely not because I'm lazy and everyone's already in alphabetical order and I didn't want to change it. Anyways, let's begin with the fish that I can't believe isn't the evolved form of Love Disc. Unfortunately, the official pronunciation has nothing to do with your mom. Instead, you should be saying a Lomomola. I wish there was some way to give you a hint on how to remember this pronunciation, but I'm at a loss. You just gotta wing it and hope you get somewhere close to a Lomomola at the end. The evolved form of Swablu, that's Swablu, not Swablu, like putting a Q-tip in your ear in the bathroom, is called Altaria, not Altaria, like what happened to an old pair of jeans when I tried to see if I could still fit into them. So when thinking of this beautiful majestic cloud dragon, picture Tar. I doubt the official pronunciation for the evolved form of Flaffy is the most common way to say it. I personally go with Ampharos, but the Pokemon company wants you to call it Ampharos, like Ross from Friends. I checked the etymology, and it's based on Ampere, Pharaoh, and the Greek word for lighthouse, but that said, Pharos. So I'm not sure I agree with Ampharos. I know I'm not alone when I call these prehistoric birds Archon and Archeops, like the best part of the foot besides the toes. Or I guess like Archie from Archie Comics, but regardless, that is wrong. They're actually called Archon and Archeops. I thought there'd be some helpfulness in the etymology, like learning they were based on the word archaic or something. I was wrong. They're based off of a reptile-like fossil bird called an Archaeopteryx, which was no help whatsoever. Sometimes when it comes to Pokemon pronunciations, you can psych yourself out. I originally thought this was called Ariados, but after hearing a few people call it Ariados, I changed my tune like a cricket, because Ariados sounded more right and kind of made me feel like a pirate. Well, turns out my original guess was correct, as the evolved form of Spinarak is officially called Ariados, like Ari Potter. If you've seen every good episode of The Simpsons multiple times like I have, you can be forgiven for calling this Pokemon B-Sharp, like Homer's barbership quartet, the B-Sharps. For the rest of you, you've probably always correctly called it Bisharp, like a sharp chess piece. So, you know the Pokemon Mudbray? Yeah, forget that entirely when you say the evolved form of Shroomish. It's Breloom, not Breloom. The way to remember Breloom is by thinking Umbrella and Mushroom, because its head looks like an Umbrella Mushroom. It really makes you wonder if the Pokemon Company had the name first or the design first. I think we can all agree that Primarina is the best of the Alola starters. Decidueye and Incineroar are far too overrated. True Pokemon fans know who the best is. As for Primarina's pre-evolved forms, well, the starter is Poplio, so you'd probably think the middle evolution is called Brion. Nope, it's Brion. I was going to make a Game of Thrones joke, but when I looked it up, I rediscovered that that character is called Brienne, completely invalidating the potentially award-winning jest that now nobody will hear. You can blame George R. R. Martin for that one. Cherubi and Cherum are based on Cherries and Cherubim, which is a child or something, so you'd think they're pronounced Cherubi and Cherum, right? That would obviously make the most sense given the spelling and etymology, but you're forgetting the evil we're dealing with. The official pronunciations are Cherubi and Charum, so instead of sitting on a chair when saying these names, you have to pretend you're British and act like you're chuffed. Fun fact, even though I've heard the word chuffed numerous times, I still have no idea if it means good or bad, and I'm too lazy to look it up. There's two ways you could pronounce the pre-evolved form of lantern, and both of them have to do with food. So I'll let you choose. Do you think it's called chin chow, or do you think it's called chin chu? Well, I hope you chew with your mouth closed because your jaw is about to drop. You officially say the angler Pokemon's name as chin chow like you're chowing down on some grubbin. 
you won't believe the different names I've heard and said for these two. They're Sinchino, Sincino, and Mincino. Okay, maybe it's not that many incorrect pronunciations. But since these are based on chinchillas, you want to call them Chinchino and Minchino. There is no sinning here. This is a family-friendly channel. What's the best part of the underside of the foot? The sole. And what's the worst thing a foot can be? Course. The Pokemon Company translation team knew this, so that's why Corsola is pronounced Corsola, and its evolved form is pronounced Cursola. Wait, Cursola doesn't have the word soul in it. But Corsola does, yet the final four letters in each name are the exact same. Make up your mind, Pokemon Company! More than 20 years ago, millions of kids entered the Johto region for the first time and chose Totodile as their starter Pokemon, probably not because it has the word Toe in its name twice. Then it evolved into Crocona, which is said like, oh hell nah, not Crocona. But when it evolved at level 30, those same kids were probably confused by the spelling, which came as a result of the character limitations at the time. They also probably thought it was a feral alligator, which is true, and called it Fair Alligator. But of course that's wrong. Apparently it's actually Feraligator, so you should think of it as a feral alley alligator, which I think is far more dumber. I never imagined anyone would mispronounce the evolved form of Yamask, but then I heard someone call it, well, I can't actually say what they called it. But you should be calling this guy Cofagregus. There's a small pool of people who probably thought it was Cofagregus, like egregious, but it's Cofagregus. As for the evolved form of Galarian Yamask, that's Runeregus. I know this is out of order, but this is my video, so you can't tell me what to do. Also, we're going from a mummy to a pharaoh, so it makes sense. Well, technically, we're not going to a pharaoh. That's actually the whole point of this next pronunciation. Anyways, these are not Pharaoh Seed and Pharaoh Thorn. They are Pharaoh Seed and Pharaoh Thorn. The Pokemon Company sure does like to make an O sound like an Ah, don't they? So remember how Drampa was pronounced like Grandpa and not Grandpa? Well, this is a terrible comparison, but Rourke's final Pokemon isn't pronounced Crannydos like I want to explore every nook and cranny of your granny. Rather, it's cranidose, like cranium, because cranidose's brain is so big it's busting through its cranium. The evolved form of Starupi is definitely one of the more common mispronunciations when it comes to Pokemon names. Drapion is probably number one, with Drapion number two, but this Pokemon has nothing to do with your drapes or curtains. Even though there's only one P in the name, allow me to introduce you to Drapion. According to Pokemon DB, the name is a combination of Dragon and Scorpion. Which raises several new questions, but when saying this Pokemon's name, think about trapping it. You want to trap the drap. Pokemon TCG players know what I mean. This is considered one of the most beautiful Pokemon in existence. This is not. But what they do have in common is that you've probably been saying them wrong. For the fish, it's a feeble bass, so Feebass isn't surprising, though anyone who called it Phoebus is surely disappointed right now. As for the evolution, a lot of people on Reddit were upset that it's not pronounced melodic, like melodic. Instead, mylotic is the correct pronunciation. They were mostly harping on the fact that we shouldn't be thinking of a tick when staring upon this tender beauty. Mylotic is a combination of the Venus de Milo sculpture, which Homer peeled off that girl's butt in gummy form, and exotic. So think of an exotic person named Milo instead of a melody. Now we come to perhaps one of the most infuriating Pokemon pronunciations of all time. Its twin is a straightforward Volbeat. But if you thought this was called Illumise or Illumise, you're very, very wrong. Say it with me now, Illumise. Yes, this is, and always has been, Illumise. The etymology only says it's based on the word illuminate, so I don't know where they got the pronunciation of Illumise. Regardless, there you go, Illumise. It hurts me to say it like that. Next up, I don't care what the official pronunciation is. It's a Pikachu clone, so I'm only ever calling it more Pico, like let me peek at your binder. And also, more Pico sounds so much better than uh, more Peko. It's a combination of the Japanese words for guinea pig and hungry, but that doesn't mean I want to be thinking about pecking when I say this Pokemon's name. Pecking is what a bird does. This is not a bird, this is a guinea pig. Continuing their love of adapting words from other languages into English, we have the weird looking Metroid thing that evolves into Musharna. Even though it's spelled mana, like money, think moon because it's pronounced Muna. It's a combination of Japanese for dream and Latin for moon, so I'll let it slide, but I don't know if I'm ready to let go of mana. 
Speaking of loss, this is called shell loss, not shell loss. I'm sorry to anyone like me who thought otherwise. Yet another mushroom type Pokemon, we have Shinotic, the evolved form of Moralul. I always flip flop between Shinotic and Shinotic, so it's nice to know I was wrong on both attempts. Shinotic is based off Shiitake, Shine, and Hypnotic, so I have no idea where the she part comes from. Unless someone at the Pokemon company accidentally created Sheesh before anyone else and we just didn't realize it. My favorite thing about researching for these videos was seeing Pokemon with seemingly obvious pronunciations actually have slightly different pronunciations because why not? Some rapid fire examples of this are Palosan instead of Palosan, Panchum instead of Pancham, Pidove instead of Pidove, Pikipak instead of Pikipak, and Pupitar instead of Pupitar. And for a recent example from the Galar region, they're Stwovit. For a few years, I called it Stwovit, exactly like it's spelled. But you've realized by now that the Pokemon Company is the most evil organization around. Team Rainbow Rocket has nothing on them. To put myself in a good mood again, let's talk about feet. Instead of pronouncing the Sol Rock, as in better call Sol, think of a Sol and call it Sol Rock. I was also going to suggest Solstice as the other possible thing to envision when saying Sol Rock, but the etymology wants you to think of Solar which is probably a lot easier to remember. The worst movie trope I've noticed recently is when a character gets knocked to the ground, is losing the fight badly, and then they reach their hand to the side and find the exact thing they need to bash the other person over the head. All while that other person does absolutely nothing. Why am I bringing this up? It's not because I just watched any action movie released within the last 20 years. It's because I thought this Pokemon was called Tropius. I'll take the L on this one. It's obviously Tropius, like tropical. To quickly make you forget how dumb I was, I'll tell you a fun fact. Tropius can fly. Those leaves aren't just for show. Okay, okay, I know I just cleverly steered you away from thinking about how stupid I was when I was younger, but now I have to remind you. I thought this Pokemon was called, I kid you not, Unown. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up, it's not my fault. I never bothered catching Unown when it showed up in the games, so I didn't put much, or clearly any, thought into it. But it's unknown. Like, for some unknown reason, I called it Unown. At least I didn't call it Unown, though, right? Do you, do you feel that? The unshakable sadness as you peek at the time remaining on the video? It means we're almost done, and the final three are some surprisingly common mispronunciations. First up, even though it's the Queen Bee, the evolved form of Comb Bee is pronounced Vespaquen, not Vespaqueen. As for the beautiful butterfly, it pains me whenever people call it Vivillin. Possibly because it's the 666 Pokemon on the national decks. This is one I'm proud to say I've always had right. A combination of the words Vivify and the movie Papillon starring Charlie Hunnam and Rami Malek, this is called Vivion. And finally, we go to the end of the alphabet with the unicorn kitty cat, Zeraora. I've heard people call it Zerora, but you need to think Sarah Michelle Geller and Rita Ora when you say Zeraora. Or pretend you're at a baseball game and doing one of the million different chants people created to distract themselves from how boring a baseball game can be. Your choice. There you have it. You can now wake up tomorrow and dazzle your friends and co-workers with knowledge they'll never use. But I'm not stopping here. Even though it might be out of order now because of freaking Scholastic, I'll be releasing a new video every week on how to correctly pronounce different Pokemon names that you've never said correctly. All culminating in a massive video where I show you how to say literally all 1,000 Pokemon names. Yeah, that's gonna be a long one. Stay tuned.